Hi, I'm Emma Kessler. I'm at Colonial Trail Elementary School, and today we are talking about equivalent fractions. Okay, so today we're talking about equivalent fractions. Who wants to read our learning intention? Abby? Good job. Who can read our success criteria? Rumi? I can show two or more fractions that represent the same value and explain how I know they are equivalent. Nice. So what is our learning intention? What does that mean? Yes, Aaron? It means like a goal you want to have by the end of the lesson. Yeah, good job. And then what's our success criteria? What does that mean? You want to remember? Noreen? Yeah, like something that we hope that we can do by the time that our lesson is over. Okay, so we're going to go over our rights of learners. I have the right to be confused. I have the right to say what makes sense to me. I have the right to revise my thinking. I have the right to share unfinished thinking and not be judged. Good job. Okay, so our first question is, how might we use models to explore whether fractions are equivalent? Anyone have any ideas? How might we use models to explore whether fractions are equivalent? Erin? Um, we might use models, so, so like, if I had one half and there was another, and there was like six twelfths, six twelfths and one half are equal because we have background knowledge about six being half of twelve and the a half is a half of one. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Anyone else want to share? Okay. All right, so at a level zero, you see your name here. You probably can't if you're all the way back there, but you're, you're going to find your name. And then you're going to find your fraction, and you're going to find it on this table. And then you're going to go back and have a seat. Ready, set. Does everyone have their fraction? Yep. Yep. Thumbs up if you're ready. Yes, yes. Perfect. OK. Now, at a level zero, find a partner with an equivalent fraction. So they can't have the same exact fraction. They need to have a fraction that equals the same amount as yours, but it has a different denominator. And go. Mm -hmm. So then you guys can sit together. Cool. You can sit together. What do you have? Um, you have five times. What's that equivalent to? Okay. Five tenths. If you have five, you could have five more would be would be 10, which would be equivalent to? Mm -hmm. So if you have just five, that's equivalent to? You have five, ten. so that's equivalent to one half, right? What else could it be equivalent to? Okay, let's find somebody that has something like one half or something that's equivalent. You guys found your match? Okay. Let's see if we can help Myra. Myra has five tenths. Does anyone have 
a fraction that is equivalent to 5 tenths. Can we spread out a little bit so that we know if you have your match? Maybe you can go sit down with your partner or stand in another area of the room. So you guys are matched. You guys are matched. We're looking for a match for Myra. You found a match? Perfect. Great. Okay. All right, now I want you to discuss how you know your fractions are equivalent, just with your partner. Discuss with your partner how you know. They are. They are equivalent. You, you're right, because 3 6 is equivalent to 5 tenths. You're right, because 3 6 is equivalent to 1 half, and then 5 tenths is also equivalent to 1 half. So you got it. You're right. And how do you, let's see, can we put them next to each other? That might help us see it a little bit better because that's why we have these models. So that, if, yeah, see, look, if we look at these models right next to each other, aren't they the, they're the same size, aren't they? And that helps tell us that they're equivalent, right? Can you kind of see it? Yeah. All right, we're going to come back in five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, now you're going to find another pair of partners with equivalent fractions. However, some of you may not find another pair, and that is okay. Okay, ready? Go. Abby, what do you have? You have two twelfths. You have two twelfths? Nice. And who's your partner? Kaylin. Okay, so stay with Kaylin, and then you and Kaylin as a pair are going to go find. Oh, okay. Are we looking at the numbers? Let's make sure we look at the numbers. So we have four eighths, yep. One half, yep. Three sixths, yep. Six twelfths. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a very big pair. It might be in pairs too, right? So it's not, it's more than a pair, right? Should you go get her and check? That's a lot of equivalent fractions, right? They're all half. That's a lot of people. Can you say that again? They're all half. Ishii, did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right, let's come back in five, four. It's okay. Stay with your group. Three, two, one. Stay with the people you're with. Don't leave your fraction rods alone. Okay, I think we kind of discussed how they were equivalent. Did we have that discussion? I saw that Aaron and Mukulon were talking. I saw this massive group of people were talking. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that Zoe and Kate were talking. I think that we just we had this discussion already, yes? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, people who had two twelfths and one six. How did you know your fractions were equivalent? Well, first off, they were the same size. If we took one away, it would be for hers, it would be one third. Because mm -hmm. half of six is three. Nice. Good job. Thank you for sharing. We use a butterfly method and four twelfths and one third um, to a four and. Um, and three equals 12, and then, no, yeah. 
um, 12 and 1, 12 times 1 equals 12, mm. and then 3 times 4 equals 12. Oh, okay. I love that. And it would also be some Awesome. So I'm out of the box thinking. Okay, how do you know these fractions are equivalent? Um, they're, all the, they're all half. Okay. They're all half? Roma, did you want to add something? You what? I said the same thing. You said the same thing? Do you want to add something? Anyone want to add something from that group? It's a big group. Stormy? They were the, all the same size. They were all the same size? Love that. How do you know these fractions are equivalent? If we bake it in half, it has the same size. And uh, if we put it together, it has the same size. So we know it's equivalent. So did you lean heavily on these models? No. Like, were you looking, because you were talking about breaking it apart. Yeah, so like we yeah. broke it, or since a half. So, yeah, background knowledge of one fifth and two tenths being equivalent. Mm -hmm. So, I just added mine on top, and then put on, added yeah. his on top, and then we looked at the size, and they look cool. the same. Okay, yeah, so you broke the models apart, yeah. and then you put them back together. People who had these fractions. Well, they were the same size. So they were the same size? Uh-huh. And they both have the same value of it. Oh, that was great. Can you say that again, Rumi? Because they both have the same value. Did everyone hear that? Yeah. yeah. The same value. OK. Why would we need to be able to figure out equivalent fractions in our everyday lives? I'm going to give you about 30 seconds of think time to think about why you might need to be able to figure them out. Why might you need to share why do we need to be able to figure out equivalent fractions in our everyday lives. So not just fractions, but equivalent fractions. Roma. If you share something with a friend, you need to split it equally in half. Mm-hmm. Yes, Marie. Also for like building things, like how much do you need for this material and stuff? So if your friend like buys a cupcake and he gives you the he takes three fourths of the cupcake and he gives you one fourth of the cupcake, you can be like that's not fair. You get more, and then he will split it apart. Mm. Yeah. Kate. Like when we go to Costa Rica, we need to trade in money for like the money that we use in Costa Rica. So like if we pay a, so we, if like we pay a thousand dollars, we should get a thousand dollars back. And so what makes that so important? Because if I go somewhere and I want a different currency and I give $1,000 and want $1,000 back, am I getting it in USD, the dollars that we use here in the United States? No, you're going to get like what currency that they get. Yeah. But I might want to, what might I want to do to, to check it, right? I might want to check it. Yes, the hot tea. Somewhere. Can you say that a little louder? Uh, go to the bank or ask the local people or... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you want to share an example as well? So, example, we went to, like, to Europe or, or oh, Spain. Oh, I meant like equivalent fractions. So, we use one, we use one-third and mm -hmm. 
Okay, so it's like if somebody gives you something and it's one third and someone gives you something else and it's one fourth, you might say that's not fair and you might want something split more evenly. Okay, Zoe, was your hand up? No, oh, okay, Aaron? So like sometimes when you go to other countries, um, when you're trading currency, you can give them a thousand US dollars and you can get more than a thousand of that currency back. Mm. It's mm -hmm. worth a thousand US dollars, but it can be more than that. It can be more than a thousand Costa Rica dollars. Yeah. Abby? If you have a pizza, and if you cut it in into, if you want a bigger slice of pizza, if you cut it and you're sharing it with your friend, if you cut it into little slices and you don't know how much there are, you you could also get that. Bigger slices, you could cut it like one fourth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Stormy? Sitting with you and your friend went to like a store and y'all spent a hundred dollars, y'all would need to split it equally. So like so like um one friend would pay fifty and the other friend would like pay fifty. Mm hmm That's definitely important, right? We want to be able to split things evenly, especially when we're when we're all, if we're all going somewhere, we want to make sure that we're splitting things evenly and nobody's paying a lot more for something. Yes, Ishii. Um, like if you're sharing with somebody and like one person gets more, it's not fair because it's not equal. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Baba? if you're cooking something, you don't know, you need to know how much of like any like flour or water or just anything. Exactly. And so what if you're baking a cake and then you want to make a layered cake? So you have to make more of it. You'd have to be able to know how to find equivalent fractions, right? Yeah, it's a really good skill that we have to have throughout our lives because I know y'all will grow up baking. Okay, so what was our learning intention? Zoe? Like, if, like, a goal you have that you want to learn by the end of the lesson. Exactly. Stormy, do you want to read it? Yeah. I can identify a fraction that is equivalent to mine because it represents the same value. Good job. And what's our success criteria? What does that mean, Erin? Success criteria is, like, what you want to know or what you want to, like, have the Yeah, so close. So like what you want to walk away being able to do. Let's see if, if we successfully met our success criteria. Ava, do you want to read our success criteria? I can show two or more factors that represent the same value and explain how I know the answer. Okay. Do you think we did the learning intention? I can identify a fraction that is equivalent to mine. Did we do that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, so that got a green check mark. And then our success criteria, I can show two or more fractions that represent the same value and explain how I know they are equivalent. I know there were some people who maybe didn't find more than two because there just weren't more than two in the set of fraction rods, and that's okay. But did we all at least find another, a partner that had an equivalent fraction? Did we meet our success criteria? Perfect. Thank you so much for watching. See you.